President of the American Heart Association. Welcome to Scientific Sessions 2015 in Orlando, Florida, where a number of events related to this year's meeting are already underway. Yesterday, we held the 2015 AHA Guidelines for CPR and ECC Instructor Update Conference, where AHA instructors learn from AHA experts how to incorporate the latest updates to the guidelines into the courses they teach. This morning, we open the Resuscitation Symposium and Early Career Day. We expect to hear some groundbreaking science from the Resuscitation Symposium this year, and we look forward to hearing more about that. Programming for both these events will continue into the week. Tomorrow, we launch a genomics boot camp for professionals interested in learning about how basic principles of genetics and genomics are being applied to the practice of medicine, a two-day cardiovascular nursing symposium, and of course, scientific sessions themselves. I'm especially looking forward to a number of invited lectures. Keith Fox from the University of Edinburgh, the British Heart Foundation Center for Cardiovascular Science, will be presenting the Paul Dudley White International Lecture on the identification of the vulnerable plaque from bench to bedside. Dr. Andrew Conrad from Google Life Science will be presenting the Lewis A. Connor Memorial Lecture. He will be discussing innovative approaches to data acquisition and bioinformatics as he explores science of the future. Christine Seidman from Harvard Medical School's Department of Genetics will be presenting the Distinguished Scientist Lecture on the Genetics of Heart Disease. Finally, I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the opening session where I will be delivering this year's presidential address on a subject of special interest to me, the need to raise awareness about the risk factors, symptoms, and long-term impact of vascular diseases. Vascular diseases, though a common and serious component of the overall burden of cardiovascular disease, are not always recognized and understood. My talk will address the epidemiology of these diseases and will suggest a number of steps that can be taken to improve the diagnosis, treatment, and quality of life outcomes for patients with these conditions. We know you won't be able to attend all the terrific professional opportunities on offer here at Scientific Sessions this year, so Science News will be providing coverage of the meeting on the website Coverage will include exclusive expert interviews, presentation slides, summary slides, as well as links to abstracts, simultaneous publications, and other resources related to each day's science. The coverage will be updated on the website and on the American Heart Association YouTube channel as the science goes off embargo and delivered via a daily recap email and by social media alerts. As you know, at the core of our meeting is the terrific late-breaking clinical science that will be presented throughout the week. So now I'm going to turn it over to Frank Selke and Eric Peterson, Chair and Vice Chair of the Program Committee for this year's meeting, who will provide a more in-depth preview of some of the late-breaking clinical trials you can expect to hear about this week during Scientific Sessions 2015 in Orlando. Hello, welcome to Orlando and the 2015 American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. I'm Dr. Frank Selke, Chairman of the Committee on Scientific Sessions Program, and next to me is Dr. Eric Peterson, Vice Chairman of the Committee. Uh, this year we had a record number of submissions for late-breaking clinical trials and uh, extremely high uh, uh, content uh, for, for the meeting. Uh, one of the main trials that was submitted, one of the most important trials, was the SPRINT trial. Eric, would you like to give us some of the details? Sure. Thanks, Frank. The SPRINT trial was quite exciting. We actually did not have this on our radar. The study was uh, run by the NIH and was conducted in over 9,000 patients looking at two levels of blood pressure control. One, the typical one we'd been thinking about, getting systolic blood pressures under 140. But then in a second population, looking at driving down blood pressures to 120. This was run in over 9,000 patients, as I said, over the age of 50. Median age on that population was over 67. So this is an older group of individuals. And the question was, would more intensive blood pressure lowering result in better outcomes? The study was supposed to run over six years, 
But thankfully for us in this meetings, it ended early and the preliminary results and report says that the uh, lower or stronger intervention uh, results uh, look much better than those in the uh, traditional uh, 140 cutoff point. But to hear those results, Frank, will be amazing. We wonder about which groups benefited, uh, how they drove down those blood pressures. A lot will affect how we actually ultimately treat patients with high blood pressure. Yeah, this could be a real game changer for the treatment of patients with hypertension. I know that even right now, the guidelines committees are already trying to debate how will we integrate that into our, our clinical guidelines and ultimately how you'll integrate it into clinical practice. Another important trial was uh, in the resuscitation symposium uh, comparing continuous uh, chest compressions with ventilation versus the traditional interrupted chest compressions uh, with, uh, with ventilation. You'd think after all these decades, we would know how to do CPR and which method would be most effective. Yet uh, there's continued innovation uh, going on uh, in trials to look at the, the most effective way. So this is a very large trial, uh, including tens of thousands of patients in over 100 centers. Uh, and the results were just uh, finalized recently. And I think it's gonna give us a lot of important information on whether we should do CPR one way or another. So we're really looking forward to the results of this trial. Another area that I think all of our reviewers are excited to see are in the area of prevention. As the American Heart Association has emphasized Life Simple 7, trying to get down the risk factors that we have, blood pressure, uh, weight loss, uh, eating right, getting cholesterol under control. These factors are very important to achieve, can ultimately change how we do in terms of long-term risk for disease and ultimately how long we'll live. But yet how to achieve that has been very difficult. At these meetings, there's a series of studies that actually vigorously compare various interventions. Some of them being mobile health, which has gotten a lot of buzz these days, but other ones using life coaches and other sort of more traditional methods of achieving long-term changes in one's risk for disease. Finally, we've actually looked at various new drugs and how they can, can be intervened in the process and even how genetic uh, information, if I knew my genes, would that change how aggressively I would lower my cholesterol? Seeing these results and what works versus what doesn't, again, should be affecting how you will treat your patients tomorrow. Another very important trial is a follow-up study uh, from the Cardiothoracic Surgery Network and the best way to treat severe ischemic mitral regurgitation. Uh, it's been often said that surgeons are sometimes wrong but never in doubt, and most surgeons are sure they know the way to treat ischemic mitral regurgitation. Uh, two years ago at scientific sessions uh, was pre presented the, uh, the, the one-year follow-up of the severe mitral regurgitation trial comparing mitral valve repair versus replacement. And to a lot of surgeons and cardiologists' surprise, the patients that received the mitral valve replacement actually did better. Now, this is very contrary to, uh, to the way most surgeons and a lot of cardiologists thought. And in this year's scientific session is going to get the two-year follow-up to see if these results uh, are uh, present for a more long period of time or if mitral valve repair actually will become better than replacement. So we're all looking very forward to the uh, results of this trial. And it's gonna have tremendous implications. Again, how we treat patients with leaky mitral valves. Another very important uh, clinical trial was a PRADA trial. Uh, patients that receive chemotherapeutic agents for treatment of breast cancer often have a reduction in heart function. Uh, and it, this trial looks to the effects of beta blockers and an uh, ARB on the reduction in heart function in patients that receive chemotherapy for breast cancer. Uh, so this may have a lot of implications regarding women's health, especially those that suffer breast cancer and receive chemotherapy for this. Now another trial that uh, is important, or a series of trials, are the, uh, the heart failure trials. Eric, uh, you wanna summarize some of those? Yeah, Prada brings to mind the idea of preventing heart failure, but once we hit heart failure, what can we do to actually improve their long-term outcomes? Heart failure is a growing problem in America. It's sort of the end stages of many of the, the cardiovascular disease treatments that we would get to with individuals. So in finding treatments that would be effective in helping these individuals has been tough in the past. But at these meetings, we have a series of studies that have actually been put forth that show promise in terms of how we can improve their outcomes, improve their functional status. Some of these are drugs. Other ones are actually lifestyle interventions and continuity of care issues as we transition patients from home 
or from hospital into home settings. Can we do things that will actually improve their, their likelihood of doing well, getting functional again, and ultimately not coming back into our services? So in all in all, Frank, an exciting series of studies looking at how we can treat heart failure. We've only covered the tip of the iceberg uh, with regard to clinical trials at scientific sessions. Uh, like I said, we had a record number of sub sub submissions, outstanding content, uh, so I really look forward to this meeting. Well, thank you very much. I think it is going to be exciting, Frank. I can't wait to see the, these results, and ultimately even more, I can't wait to use these back when I get home.